All right, so when we think about this next part, right, if we know that police are being used for these kinds of purposes, then it also leads us to uh, question some other stuff, right, about like what is and what is not happened, you know, what the training looks like, right? So because these are early days, and that is very important to consider, we have these early days of police. And when you're picked up off the street, right, you get a few things, right? So you have the opportunity to get maybe a badge, possibly a uniform. You might, you might get like a billy club, And if you're lucky, possibly a gun, right? And there is almost zero training. You know, whatever training there is, is very superficial, right? So what does this mean, right? If we think about this is the context of what's going in, right? Well, you have like, you know, a bunch of like, you know, probably like uneducated, undertrained, And certainly, predominantly white male, um, white male police out on the streets, right? And you also have to consider the context of who these people are dealing with, right? In this case, right? You're dealing with people who are, there's a lot of social unrest. There's also uh, the social unrest, right? There's a lot of violence that's happening, right? And because the police aren't really known, right? There is an opportunity for like a ton of conflict. Between the police and public. And with this particular case, right, if there's a lot of this conflict that's ongoing between the police and public, it's a source of, you know, like a lot of like anxiety can lead to a lot of violence. And what ends up happening, right, is that if you have this lot of conflict, right, the police have options, right? Option one, if there's a lot of conflict, right, is to run away. Keep in mind, this is before radios, this is before telephones, for anything like that, right? You'd have to run down to the station. Uh, and, you know, what, what ends up happening if you run down to the station, right, is that you really uh, don't, you, you know, you're probably not going to get attacked and people might kind of try you, right? Or if there is a conflict going on, right, you know, you're more likely to have, you know, police, you know, are more likely to act violently, right? Because that's their only... That's their only weapon, so to speak, right? You know, because you have to show you're tough and won't get intimidated. You know, I think like a lot of people, you know, and I've asked students about like how often they think police violence happens, right? You know, I've had, I've had some students say they think maybe like 20 to 40% of all encounters are like violent between the police and public. And when you consider the fact that there's over 50 million contacts between the police and public, right, they're more or less saying that they think, um, you know, it's, well, it's a lot, right? You know, you, you think 20% uh, of 50 million. So you think there's like 10 million people per year, you know, that are getting like beat up and attacked by police, right? Yeah, um, that's not the case. Um, it's more like 2% of all of those encounters have some kind of violence that's not, and that's just like any kind of use of force, you know, that, and that's uh, does not include deadly force, which is like a thousand people per year. But in these days, right, police violence is much more common. And so what ends up happening, right, is that people um, fear and loathe law enforcement because of the violence.